Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a video for you that has less to do with photographs and more to do with the spirit of thankfulness and being overall content with the photographs that you produce. Today I want to talk to you about this camera, the Fujika Compact 35, which is a 35mm viewfinder camera. I bought this camera about nine months ago, but I haven't had the opportunity to shoot it until recently. It's really reminded me a few things of why I got into film photography and overall why I love it so much. So if I inevitably lose my memory, come back to this video to remind you why film photography is awesome. So this is the Fujika Compact 35 that was released in 1966 with a 38mm f2.8 lens. This camera sports an under the lens shutter adjustment switch and this shutter will provide anywhere from 1 to 50th of a second all the way down to 1 30th of a second and a bulb mode if you're daring enough to shoot this camera at night, which I was not. There is an A mode for automatic exposure, which uses a selenium based light meter, which is a problem. <laughs> selenium based light meters don't use batteries. Rather, they use the photosensitive properties of selenium, which you can see the selenium grid here in the top left corner or top right corner of the camera. By nature, over time, the natural properties of selenium will wear down and eventually render this camera inaccurate. That is the problem I have today, where the selenium is absolutely shot and there is no chance of getting a correct exposure using it. It is all manual exposure or external light meter to the rescue for this camera. After 70 years of this camera being alive and working, I can't ask much more from it. Ask me when I'm 70 if I wanna keep working and I'll probably tell you no, but some entitled kid in his mid 20s will probably be forcing me to work like a dog. There is a slightly newer version of this camera that had cooler badging on it, but um, I think in essence, they are the same camera. So this camera I have given the nickname of the hard mode camera, and let me tell you why. Like I said, the exposure has to be done completely manually, and that is an added step for this camera. Uh, on another note, the shutter speed only goes up to 1 2 50th of a second, so you can find yourself being limited in exposure during the day by that 1 2 50th of a second shutter speed, meaning that you have to close down the aperture quite a bit, especially if you're shooting with film higher than 200 ISO. Transversely, if you were to shoot at night, you could only go down to 1 30th of a second before you have to use bulb mode and unless you have exposures that are well into the two plus second range, it might be difficult firing your shutter sync cable at exactly 1 15th of a second, but that's a limitation for me, not necessarily a limitation for you. You could be absolutely phenomenal at that. For my photos, I decided to use my phone as a light meter and the Sunny 16 rule as a backup if I wanted to shoot quickly, which the Sunny 16 rule, as you know, uses the exposure of the sun as a base, and then you can calculate basically the shadows, clouded areas. The third thing that makes this camera difficult to shoot with is that there is no way, besides the scoring on the top of the lens, to tell whether you're in focus or not. In other words, the only way to focus this camera is zone-based metering. If you are well accustomed to this camera, then that might not be a problem for you. Otherwise, you are guessing distances and I hope you have a tape measure handy. So before I get into why I find this camera to be a reminder of why photography is amazing and why we should be thankful for it, let's go through some of the pros and cons. 
Just like the name implies, it is quite compact and lightweight. Even without a camera strap, I can carry this camera comfortably in both hands and not have it get in the way when I'm out and about. When I took this camera out to shoot it for the first time, I was blown away by how easy it was to just throw it in my hand, kind of sling it around as kind of just an accessory in my hand. And contrary to other cameras that I own, like this brick, I didn't have to worry about it too much. It's so light and compact, it feels rugged, and it's purely mechanical, so it feels good to hold. The second pro that I have noted down for this camera is that it is purely mechanical and the fact that it doesn't use batteries and it relies on mechanics to shoot. That means that there's no electronics that can die in here. If you wanted to keep using this camera for years and years and years, odds are it's still gonna be here. And I would bet that this camera is probably gonna be around after you and I are gone. <laughs> the last pro I have for my short list is that this camera, if focused properly, can be quite sharp when you stop it down a little bit, say f8 or f11. I was kind of blown away at how clean the images that came out of this camera were, and I'll hopefully have a few to throw up on the screen for you. Let's move on to some cons. The first one is that this camera does not have any way to tell you if you're in focus. I know I've mentioned this before, but I actually learned the difference between a rangefinder and a viewfinder camera. A rangefinder camera will tell you what the range is on your focused subject, whereas a viewfinder will just let you find the view. So the names are pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of like the square and the rectangle thing that they teach you in school. All Squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. These are all viewfinders, but not every viewfinder is a rangefinder. Hopefully you get the point. Second con, I've already mentioned this, but it doesn't shoot high ISO film very well. So you're limited to expired film or low ISO film to shoot, which probably puts this comment in the meh category. Speaking of the meh category, let's move on to that. The f2.8 aperture on this lens is kind of like a turkey sandwich. It provides sustenance and that's about it. So why do I think that this camera is so special? Essentially, this camera is special in my eyes because when I was shooting it, I wasn't worried about anything else. I wasn't worried about whether the camera was going to do its job or whether I was using the right mode. Rather, I was only worried about myself doing the right job. When you simplify the functions of a camera, that leaves less room for error on the camera's part, and that leaves more room for error on your part, but it's kind of like if you're a control freak, you can control the outcome much more heavily. So the next time you get gear acquisition syndrome, grab yourself probably the cheapest, least feature-rich camera, and go out and shoot. I know the photos that I took with this camera are not very good in the slightest. On paper, this camera is awful. It does not check any boxes, but I love it. It's small, it's mine, and you can't ask for much more than that. I also wanted to let you guys know about a video that I am in the works of producing. It is a video where I go out with some friends to San Francisco to shoot film and just hang out overall. And I'm super excited to shoot this video and make it on YouTube for you all to watch. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button for that. It will definitely be out before the new year. I don't want to hold on to it for that long. Also, I'm trying to make it to 100 subscribers before the end of the year, so if you enjoyed the content even a slight bit, a subscription would be absolutely phenomenal, and in return you'll get more videos like this maybe, and also like the video I will upload 
soon. Um, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.